Yeah, now it's still run. Sorry. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, well, this, this lab test period may diffuse into this subsoil. Um, we don't know if there's any active uh, well procedures while the to speed up move towards some areas which are uh, more favorable to their survival. We don't know that. Uh, but they may survive in this subsoil, which maybe the, con the, the conditions are better for the survival. They may also percolate through the water and just uh, stay there. Then in here, they can also dead, and, and they can be mobilized through these rainfall events to form this what we call local mud and eventually uh, mobile runoff, in which probably people is more uh, likely to be uh, in contact with this mud. So basically, our hypothesis were that the soil is the primary reservoir for pathogenic leptospiras in, in the environment, and that the soil is, is required for the maintenance of, of the disease, uh, in the slum community at least. That water is only, well, it serves like a secondary reservoir, not the primary one, and that, well, leptospiras can persist for some time. We don't know how long, but in the soil or even in the water, depending on the conditions. So uh, I'm going to talk now about some uh, experiments that we have been doing, trying to address uh, mainly this idea of the persistence and survival. Uh, so basically, what we try to reproduce is we did this kind of microcosms in the lab. So we used, uh, well, a second, oh, sorry, as a control, 30 mL of EMGH medium, and then uh, we used as a model for water spring water, which was not autoclave, so it was it contained the autonomous microbiota of spring water. And then we used uh, 30 grams of soil at a field capacity, which is, it means that it's a pretty moist soil. In this case, we used uh, soil taken from the, from the urban slum, from Pau de Lima. It was a sandy loam soil with a pretty low organic content. It was only 3%. And we adjusted, well, the field capacity was 25% uh, of moisture. So we uh, prepared inoculums of uh, Leptospira. Oh, I didn't put it here. We work with Leptospira interrogans and agony, so L1130. Uh, and we prepare this uh, microcosmos adjusting the concentration to 10 to the 6 uh, cells per gram or ml and incubate them in, under dark conditions for well, uh, up to 28 days and we take samples ten, at 10 different points. And then we extract the DNA uh, with uh, well, kits of extraction and we quantified uh, this L1130 by LIPAL32 uh, Dagman qPCR and we also developed uh, uh, another cybergreen based uh, QPCR to work with uh, Leptospira by Flexapadoc, but we use as a control, which is a saprophyte. And we also inoculated all these mi microcosmos with, with the saprophyte one. So those are the results for the EMGH. So you would expect this, like a typical growing curve. So we inoculated uh, the microcosmos both, both with live cells and dead cells. Uh, and live cells, obviously, they, they grew up to saturation point. And uh, Leptospira by flex as well, and the dead cells decreased slowly. So this is just the control to show that the cells that we were inoculating in our microcosmos were viable and, and able to survive. So, I'm sorry, the, the dead cells, this is QPCR, the QPCR signal dropped off. Yes, so it's only DNA uh, detection. So, uh, yeah, so it's the, uh, I mean, we're not really uh, assessing which is the, uh, production of new Leptospira, but which is the accumulation of DNA in our environment. And that's the results for the, the microcosmos with soil and water. So this is the, in this column, you see the in, uh, Leptospira interrogant, and this is the Biflexa. This is the spring water, and this is the soil. So as you can see in spring water, both live and dead cells seem, DNA from live and dead cells seem to persist for a long time. Up to 28 days, we only lost kind of one lock of the concentration. And uh, well, the results for Biflexa were a little bit more irregular, but were pretty similar here. And uh, what was pretty shocking for us was that, uh, well, there was a, a very uh, sloppy decrease in the concentration of DNA in the soil that we tested. So after six, eight days, we had lost around three locks of the initial concentration of DNA. And then we saw this kind of a stabilization around 10 to the third, uh, 10 to the second. This is the limit of quantification. So whenever you are close to this limit, it's sometimes difficult to assess. And even by flex, I couldn't survive in the soil for a long time, which was pretty shocking because, uh, I mean, it's supposed to be a saprophyte. But, um, well, uh, there's lots of questions here because, uh, you know, 
well, soil conditions can be very different. Maybe this uh, Leptospira bifolaxa is not really adapted to this kind of soil. Uh, that it is a sap saprophyte, but maybe it's a saprophyte more related to water than to soil. So there's lots of questions here. Uh, so, sorry. Uh, well, the method we used to extract the DNA uh, included the shaking, so we, we didn't extract the soil directly taking a sample from the microcosmos, so we shaked uh, this volume of soil trying to extract all the bacteria from potential biofilms that, that might be forming. So it's something that can be happening, but... Um, so what, what do you mean? If you, um, well, I don't know. So you, the only difference, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> like I said, um, you know, they're dead already. You yeah. put in a fixed number of them. You measure over time. The only difference between the spring water and the soil is whether they've got soil to stick to. So yeah, exactly. DNA is persisting longer time in spring water than, than in soil, but we, 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 what we don't know if these cells that we are detecting come from dead cells or, or red dead cells or live cells. Because we cannot know with qPCR, we're only detecting DNA, so uh, we don't know if this concentration that it's kind of stabilizing here come from dead cells that they are all dead, and is the DNA that is persisting some time in the soil, or they are really some live cells in here. Does, don't the black points only show dead cells? Yes. What are the white points? The live cells. Well, so white initially, white initially white live cells, no, no, not. Yeah, initially inoculated live cells. So with this, we, we have the problem that we need to really assess, which is the difference between those that are alive and those that are uh, dead. So there's some methods, we should talk afterwards, but there's some methods where you can get rid of nucleic acids yeah. in dead cells. And then I'm going to this. <laughs> so uh, I mean, we have plenty of work ongoing, so I'm not going to present any result right now, but uh, it's what we uh, have been doing now. So we have been optimizing this technique, which is called well, propidium monazide, in which you, uh, uh, you add this, this chemical to your uh, DNA, well, to, the, to your sample, so only you can detect only those DNA coming from live cells. So we have been doing this uh, with, with our results, and it seems that some of the cells are really alive after this time, but um, I, I don't have results to, to present. So, But yes, so it would seem that some of these 10 to the third and the second are still live cells. Uh, uh, persisting for some time in the soil and also in the water. Uh, so w now another uh, issue that we had is that the soil that we were testing was a, were a, was a very uh, low uh, organic content. So we're testing a new soil with more organic content that can accept more moisture, which is also maybe enhancing the, the results. We're also testing uh, sewage, which is another compartment that might be interesting. And we are also testing mud, which is basically the soil bring uh, over to the fill capacity. So it's kind of an interface between water and soil and, and see what's, what's going on with, with if, if the survival is better than in the soil. Uh, and we have been also doing some mobilization experiments trying to shake the soil and see which is the recovery from the cells. So well, everything is kind of ongoing. Hopefully, we're going to have some results soon and we can show it to you. And uh, in another of the things, uh, we are, yes? Oh no, uh, the soil is first, uh, we probably mentioned it's autoclaved, irradiated. No, the soil is, n uh, as uh, we collected the soil and, as, as, yeah, so it's so soil collected from probably has its own microbiota, so we haven't sterilized them, so, okay. yeah, it's competition with, with all the things that might be happening there. So now in the field, we are doing some other experiments to address other problems that, that we have. So basically, in, in, the, in, our, uh, well, in one of the valleys of Pau de Lima, we're trying to determine which is the concentration in the environment and how it does it varies across time and, and, and within this, this high-risk community. So we are sampling different areas of the valley, so from the top, from the middle, and the bottom. We are sampling open uh, sewers and also standing water just to see 
uh, if these two different compartments uh, containing water have a different behavior of, of the abundance of Leptospira. And we have been doing this work trying to uh, study in three different seasons, so the dry season, intermediate season, and rainy season. Because our hypothesis would be that in the, in the rainy season, we want to have uh, well, more concentration of Leptospira circulating, at least in the water. So it's something that we have uh, ongoing. And uh, well, and now we are also testing in the field, trying to validate the results from our lab experiments, trying to do these experiments in situ. So investigating the persistence of Leptospira in the Islam community. So doing these spiking experiments using dialysis tubing. So we're going to fill this. We're filling this, this, these dialysis tubes with certain concentration and lighting them at different areas of the Islam community, so that we can assess in real conditions, so real temperature, real uh, rainfall events, it, uh, the sunlight exposure, which are the uh, real persistence of pathogenic leptospira in, in, in the field. And we're also doing uh, sampling, uh, this time working with soil, so trying to see how the concentration of leptospira in the soil varies uh, in a transect along an open sewer. So the hypothesis is that we're going to find a higher concentration of lepto in the soil in this area, which is the area where rats are more active. Uh, and as long as we go farther from this, the concentration, well, we suppose it's going to be uh, uh, lower. But maybe what we are also testing, we're going to take the samples uh, after some dry days and then when it rains. So we want to test if the rainfall event kind of mobilized this lepto probably contained here to the other area, making them more available to the people. Uh, it's this issue about, we don't know if uh, it's, well, it's the people going into the sewer which makes them get infected, or is that the rainfall events mobilize these leptos contained here and make them more available to the people. And uh, 